Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar. We'll then run through the latest from the UK Met Office run, have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days and it's drying up throughout this week and turning much warmer as well. We'll then have a look at the longer range, look at the GFS, GM, ESMDF and the ensembles and from next week onwards it looks like, oh sorry, this coming working week into next weekend onwards it does look like it's going to be very warm if not hot hot and pretty bone dry for many especially in central and southern areas of the british isles looking incredibly summer like over the next couple of weeks we'll also have a look at one specific gfs run from yesterday evening that went extremely hot and it's the first time i've ever seen this that an operational run forecasted 40 plus degrees widely across england and Wales. We'll have a look at this run. I must stress it is an extreme run. It has backtracked since and it has been run extended sort of 10 to 14 day range but it's really really extreme and it just shows you this July could be very very hot and potentially historic if we did see these sort of runs come off. We can't discount them by any means but at this stage it's a very low probability but yeah just very interesting seeing this cropping up over the last 24 hours. Just so remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitch as well. The link's in the description. So, if you do start on the live radar, you can see there is a scattering of showers once again today. But they are fewer and far between. And they are losing their intensity um, in quite a few areas. Now, of course, there are still some heavy, some thundery showers. You can see some oranges and reds during torrential rain. Uh, little potential thunderstorm cells developing there but more widely those showers are fewer and you can see their intensities are generally lower and they're just little pop-up storms and showers mostly concentrated concentrate across northeast england and yorkshire elsewhere a few showers into east anglia into the east midlands as well but nothing too crazy at all and it's going to be heading on a drying trend it already is on a drying trend but even more of a drying trend over the coming days as high pressure really builds in from the south West, as that high pressure takes control with warmer air masses wafting up from the south and southwest it's going to be turning increasingly warm throughout this week starting in the south spreading northwards throughout the week into next weekend until everywhere widely will be in the mid to maybe high 20s come next weekend and then it looks the possibility of getting into the 30s maybe next working week now, if you look at the temperatures, and it's 2 p.m., so we're reaching peak temperature of the day, nothing exceptional yet. You can see temperatures are warming in the east and the south, especially today. Temperatures into the low 20s, nothing exceptional, because again, we do have below average upper air temperatures at the moment. But as I said, with the high pressure building in with warmer air masses, it's going to increase this substantially. So you can see around the London area, into East Anglia, seeing temperatures into around 22, 23 degrees. And that's just going to be on the up today, or over the next couple of days, sorry. Elsewhere, more around the high teens, maybe touching on 20 degrees. But I said that is going to increase substantially over the coming days. So if we do now have a look at the UK Met Office run, just have a look at what the precipitation and temperature is showing over the next five days. And you can see all these showers around at the moment. You can see they're just really pop-up showers dissipating and forming very, very quickly. And they'll all really move away overnight tonight. Some more persistent rain perhaps into parts of western Scotland with some heavier rain there over the higher ground. But elsewhere it is pretty dry with just a few smacking of showers in the north and the west. As we head into Monday, you can see again... Showers around, but mainly across Scotland and maybe North England, Northern Ireland. Elsewhere, uh, sunny with a few sort of cumulus clouds popping up, similar to what we have today, but less showers within these clouds. Beyond that, as we head into Tuesday, you can see it's even drier for the south. Yes, a weather front pushing into Western Scotland. We're always going to be threatened by that with high pressure building in from the southwest. Low pressure is always going to try and push the jet stream further southwards, introducing a weather front. So western and northern Scotland, there is the potential of rain over the next week or two just from these weather fronts trying to encroach. But they're not going to make much inroads and they're going to be reducing intensity as they do. So you can see a, a decaying weather front does push in some heavier rain, maybe across the northern isles for eventually uh, it just turns drier again. All areas really to the south of Scotland and Northern Ireland are remaining pretty much bone dry, apart from maybe a few showers across Northern England. Beyond that, as we head into Thursday, again, weather fronts trying to push into Northern Scotland, a few showers, but elsewhere it's really dry, and that's continuing to Friday. 
precipitation trying to push into Scotland, but elsewhere, extremely dry. And you can see that, but if we have a look at the pressure, you can see low pressure further northwards, high pressure further south and westwards. And every day we look at this, you can see those reds, the 1,000, 30,000, 40 millibars is edging closer in at that five-day time frame. And of course, accompanied by that is much warmer in masses, 10 to 15 degrees age of the HPA. And of course, if you remember from my age of HPA temperature explainer, we can add a good 15 degrees onto that. So once 10 degree ice firm gets in, 15 degrees above that so 25 degrees widely the high temperatures as we can hear towards 15 degrees and those temperatures build we could start to get towards 30 degrees towards next weekend and the following week now if you have a look at the two meter temperatures we'll see it does follow on that pretty well you can see today those temperatures widely around that 18 to 20 degree mark and again across london east anglia maybe 21 22 as we head into monday you can see those temperatures rising more widely towards the low 20s, 20 to 22, maybe the ice at 24 degrees across parts of Kent. And as we head into Tuesday, again, slightly cooler in a few areas, but more cloud, but still that low 20s, high teens quite widely. Not too bad, I guess, across the fast north and west of Scotland and Northern Ireland, slightly cooler with precipitation and cloud trying to build in. Wednesday, warming up even further, 24, 25, 26 degrees in the south, widely 22 to 24 degrees elsewhere, even the Republic of Ireland getting up all towards the low 20s, and northern England, maybe eastern parts of Scotland, getting towards 20 degrees as well. And by Thursday, we see that continue more widespread low 20s, all uh, countries within the British Isles getting towards that 20 low 20 degree mark and you can see across England widely 23 24 25 degrees peaking around that 26 27 degree range so starting to threaten heat wave thresholds so let's say of course because the northern part of the British Isles is around 25 degrees southern 28 degrees so it's starting to reach those and as I said by next Friday Saturday Sunday we will start to breach that getting toward that 28 to 30 degree range the start for the potential heat wave so if we do now have a look at that extreme GFS run, we'll actually start on next Saturday. So in six days time, you can see the forecast on the GFS. Again, it is lower resolution, so it's going to be a degree or two off the pinpoint temperatures. That is the worrying thing with this run. You see 25, 26 degrees so in reality, be 27, maybe 28. If we run to Sunday afternoon, widely 28 degrees, maybe touching on 29, 30. If we run to the 11th Monday, widely again 25 to 28 degrees reaching those heat wave thresholds by tuesday we're getting above 30 30 31 maybe 32 degrees by the wednesday widely again low 30s 30 to 32 degrees would be spicing 33 34 and it's widespread heat that's the big thing and by thursday the 14th of july 32 33 degrees across the spine of the british Isles, extremely hot and by friday the 15th 37 degrees starting to touch on our all-time temperature record um uh, in around that 38 39 degree mark incredibly hot and by that saturday we're seeing 41 degrees across england incredibly hot that would smash our all-time temperature record by a few degrees and it'd be the first time ever the uk would have exceeded that 40 degree threshold and it would smash it widely 40 to 41 degrees and you could say locally we could get towards that 42 43 degree range incredibly hot the hottest run i've ever seen from the gfs um now i must say it is uh, the stars have aligned for this run simply because if you have a look at the time of the day it's 3 p.m that's peak time for temperatures and if you have a look at the 850 temperatures you can see those 850 temperatures peak at 3 p.m. Because if you run through to 6 p.m., they start to draw away. So these the stars are aligning for that. The 25 degree ice firm, 26, maybe 27 degree ice firm, edging on the UK, which is record upper air temperatures, starting to edge in in the far southeast for the peak time on that Saturday. Incredibly hot. That would be dangerous levels for heat we've not got the infrastructure to handle 35 degrees let alone 42 or 43 degrees that would be sweltering out there i would suspect there would be disruption widely to public transport um, we would see roads melting in places it would be extreme and this is sort of the climate catastrophe sort of scenarios that we do see hyped up quite a lot and we have 
seeing some sort of remnants of that on this latest GFS. Now, I must stress it is an extreme scenario. It's completely backtracked from this now, more towards the low 30s, so a good 10 degree drop. That is still pretty hot with low 30s, but nowhere near as hot as this. Uh, again, this is in the extended time, range, time frame in 10 to 14 days, but just shows you that we could be on for some records this coming July, the potential is there and if i do briefly run it on uh, another couple days if we do run through to sunday again temperatures into mid to high 30s 35 36 degrees so a few temperature few degrees drop and by monday the 18th back into the mid 30s 35 36 degrees and that is the end of the run extreme conditions there we would be sort of five to seven days above that 30 degree maybe 35 degree threshold it would be ridiculous heat wave um so fingers crossed we don't see something like this but i thought i'd make everyone aware just because of this, this sort of extreme scenarios we are seeing so when someone on twitter posts a chart like this they're not lying this is the output we are seeing at the moment uh, as i said it is an extreme scenario but the potential is there and we just have to keep an eye on it. Now, if we do actually have a look at the latest GFS run, we'll see it is still very warm and hot, but nowhere near that extreme. We'll actually have a look at the two meter temperatures for the equivalent day, uh, 16th of July on this run as well. Now, if we run through, you see high pressure building in and by the middle to end of this working week, it's firmly in control. By next weekend, incredibly warm temperatures will be seen with those upper air temperatures peaking in and around that 10 degree mark so 20 mid mid 20s maybe high 20s when we get slightly above that towards 10th 11th of july if we do move beyond that high pressure stays in control we don't even have to look at the pressure charts just high pressures are in control look at those upper air temperatures starting to increase that 50 degree ice firm getting close by maybe the 20 degree ice firm potentially pushing through the 14th 15th of july and you can see by that 16th of july time it's not anywhere near as hot. If we actually do have a look at the two meter temperature for the, the 16th of July, we do go into the United Kingdom look, you can see it is actually mid 20s. Now, I'd say low 30s because that's days around it would be into the low 30s. You can see there getting towards that 30 degree mark, uh, low 30s for sort of the 13th, 14th of July. So it's still very hot around this period, very warm. Heat wave thresholds likely being exceeded, sort of the mid to high 20s, if not 30 degrees, but nowhere near as hot as that past year fair. So it's not completely backtracked, it's just nowhere near as extreme. You can see in the longer run, still under higher pressure, slightly cooler air masses. But you can see this incredibly hot air mass is still just to our south. And it is something we need to keep an eye on over the coming weeks. Now, if we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure building in, looking very warm and dry, and just continues all the way into the longer term. Maybe a slight little low pressure system there in 10 days time that would introduce thundery weather that we'd have to keep an eye on as well nothing too crazy but that's just a small little system that could produce some heavier precipitation heavy showers and again we have a you know look at the united kingdom look look at those two meter temperatures see what they're showing in around that 12th uh, of uh, 12th of july mark and you can see it's 29 degrees of midday most likely would breach that into the low 30s by around 3 p.m so gm very warm as well getting towards that high 20s 30 degree mark so heat wave thresholds being exceeded if we do finish for the longer range models by having a look at the ecmwf again high pressure building in at the moment completely in control and all the way to the end of the run you can see the massive high pressure the isobars are very far apart yes low pressure try and encroach on the northern isles of scotland but most of scotland would be very dry look at those air masses widely above 10 degrees at andrew thpa so widespread temperatures around the 25 to 30 degree mark so widespread warmth and again if you have a look at the united kingdom look look at those two meter temperatures run out until tuesday afternoon again we can't quite see the peak temperature today because we can only look at six hour increments beyond day seven but you can see it is widely mid to high 20s 28 29 30 degrees would be reached somewhere in england and that would exceed heat wave thresholds and again we run back to monday again mid to high 20s went to sunday the 10th of july slightly cooler maybe some precipitation there 
but still looking very warm. And again, these are low resolution ensembles, I must stress. These are not, um, these are not, uh, these are not going to be the peak temperatures. These are a couple of degrees below what the peak temperatures would be. Uh, so that's why I would say 25, 26 degrees here, most likely to be 28 degrees in reality. So very, very warm, even though we're not seeing that 40, 41, 42 degrees sort of temperatures. It's looking very warm over the next couple of weeks. Heat wave levels are likely for some. Now, if we do finish the video, but just have a look at the ensembles, you can see why we're seeing this sort of heat wave pattern because we've got above average temperatures by just a few degrees. Because remember, this time of year, average highs in the London area is around that 22, 23 degree mark. So if we push that by a couple degrees, two or three degrees, suddenly the highs would be 25, 26. And when we see heat building over a number of days, it can allow those temperatures to rise by another degree or two. And that's where we start to see these 28, 29 degree marks. And of course, if we reach that by another couple degrees, Degrees, that's when we get towards that 30 degree mark. So that's why, even though this chart doesn't look exceptional, it's because we're seeing a slightly above average temperatures and it consistently being dry as well with light winds all just sort of culminates in that very warm, if not hot pattern. At this stage, though, I must stress, though, we're not seeing any extreme heat in the next week to 10 days. Next week to 10 days, max temperatures look around that 30 degree mark. Nothing above that, really. You can see the best by this ensemble chart. If we wanted to break 30 degrees, um, we need to get towards that 15 degree mark. And that's why in the longer term, when we head towards the 15th to 20th of July, where we saw that extreme run from the GFS last night, where it gets towards that 15 to 25 degree mark, that's when we could see those mid to high 30s. Uh, but it is very uncertain and unlikely at this stage to come off like that, because you see there is a lot of spread, but there are quite a few going very hot. That's why we have to keep an eye on it. It is below average over the next couple of days. That's why the temperatures are not going to be anything crazy over the next day or some sort of next one to three days. But beyond that, as soon as those temperatures rise above average, with bone dry condition for most, you can see a few odd showers here or there, just pop up showers, maybe tiny bits of instability could give some heavy thundery showers at times, but nothing crazy at all. If you have a look at those two meter temperatures, you can see they're just on the rise over the next four or five days. For the majority of the ensembles, have them around 25 degrees. And again, they're low resolution, so you can add a couple of degrees, getting towards that 27 to 30 degree mark, which is reaching heat wave thresholds. And if we just have a look at the ECDFs, the Fs, compare that, so you can see again, very warm, if not hot in the long term, maybe slightly warmer than the GFS, and it got loads of consistency from around that 7th to sort of 13th of July mark. Very few are below average now. The majority are at least a degree or two above average, some getting towards 5 degrees above average, getting towards that 10 to 15 degree mark at 850 HPA, which would give widespread highs of around 25 to 30 degrees. Longer term, again, you can see some very extreme runs getting towards the 20 degree mark. Not quite as many as the GFS, but we just have to keep an eye on it. Some introducing low pressure in the longer term, 15th of July onwards, but it's so far away, there's no real point looking at that at this stage. Um, but yeah, it's looking very warm and dry over the next week to two weeks. Yes, there's a possibility of extreme heat in the longer term. We're seeing some runs crop up like that GFS 6 o'clock run from last night. But for the time being, it's looking very warm, very dry, potentially turning hot for some, especially further southwards within the next 7 to 10 days, with temperatures maybe creeping back into the low 30s for some. But widely, it looks very warm, above average temperatures, summer, beautiful summer-like conditions, where it's going to be bone dry and hot, um, with those temperatures widely around that 25 to 30 degree mark, as I said. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully we don't see those extreme runs from that GFS later uh, this month, but hopefully everyone can go out and enjoy the warm, dry weather, and of course, stay safe out there with plenty of sun cream, staying hydrated, as well because of course even though it isn't extremely hot uh, it's not getting well above 30 degrees we can still see issues even when it's just uh, slightly above average to moderately warm so please do stay safe out there so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon